ba 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 boom explode hey what's up guys it's Jake Freena from boomexplode.com and I'm here with Day One Studios and Warner Brothers Interactive Psychological Thriller Fear 3 in the first edition of our Second Chance Sunday segment thanks to our friends over at GameMind.com in the world of gaming there are often hidden gems that go overlooked or unappreciated these gems are even more common in the first person shooter market the Fear series seems to have fallen into this particular bunch of games and is even further emphasized by the trilogy's cap. The storyline of this supernatural thriller follows a handful of incredibly successful telekinetic experiments resulting from Armacom Technology Corporation's Project Origin, a scheme aimed at producing an army of telepathic cloned super soldiers that could be controlled remotely by the mind of a single person. Armacam is led by Harlan Wade, father of the original Fear and Fear 3's protagonist, who is simply called Point Man, as well as the game's first villain. Harlan Wade is a man who also experimented on the deceased mother of his two kids, Alma Wade, in an attempt at world domination. Fear 3 picks up with the incredibly powerful Alma having thrown herself upon Fear 2's protagonist in order to become a child, going into labor, threatening the world's existence with the potential for an even more powerful te telekinetic soldier. So in an attempt to save the world, you must make it to Alma, your mother, and kill her before the contractions, which send a psychic wave of destruction across the landscape with each one, cease and she gives birth. All the while this is happening, you're haunted by your brother Paxton Fettel, whose head you put a bullet in at the end of the first game, due to the psychic link that was formed when you were being experimented on together. As you navigate Point Man through the game's levels, titled Intervals, you engage in combat with Armacam's army using a wide array of weapons that will allow you to simply pop the heads off enemies instantly turn them into a human slush, or pin them against a wall with a massive nail. And don't worry, Day One spared no gore in the making of this game. Since Point Man has been endowed with certain mental abilities from what he's been through, players are given the, the power to slow down time, much like Max Payne's bullet time. Of course, there's a limited amount of time which can be spent in slow-mo, but it's usually enough to get the job done or prevent an inconvenient death. The controls and flow of the combat are awesome and really allow you to fully engage yourself in the game. The graphics are nothing to gawk at, but they are still fairly decent and very passable because the main focus of the game is to thoroughly creep the player out using the weird events that Alma and your father create around you with their abilities as you play in the usually darkened atmosphere. It may be due to the rather timid graphics, but even when the firefight you're in gets very crowded, the game handles it flawlessly, which is more than some recent games can say. Once you beat the campaign with Point Man, you unlock the ability to play through with your annoying shadow, Fettle. This perk adds extra playability to the game and the campaign alone, without even touching upon the multiplayer, and since Fettel is dead, gameplay is very different. As Fettel, you're able to possess the armor camp soldiers and turn the weapons on their own allies. When this is done, it's pretty much like playing as Point Man, but you can't stay in that soldier's body forever without picking up the psychic energy that is dropped by a recently deceased enemy. When this energy runs out, you will burst forth from the core of your possessee in a rather gruesome fashion. Outside of possession, Fettel isn't completely helpless. He does have the ability to lift people off the ground with one hand and shoot red psychic balls of destruction out of the other at the same time. In co-op, players are given the option of running through with a friend as both characters, allowing you to use both powers to work together, making for an even better experience and a few achievements along the way. Everything is tracked in Fear 3, whether it be time spent behind a cover or a kill count for a particular weapon and a challenge based level system that will unlock some perks for you along the way, like more time in slow-mo. These perks, levels, and challenges carry over between campaign and multiplayer as well. There are four multiplayer game modes in Fear. The first is called Soul King, and pins players in a free-for-all type scenario in which the goal is to collect the souls of fallen enemies by possessing soldiers in the battlefield. In Contractions, players are placed in a stationary location that they have to defend from waves of enemies, basically Fear's version of a horde mode. The third, and my personal favorite, is eloquently titled Effing Run, and places players in a run-for-life scenario as you're chased by a cloud of death and forced to kill enemies as well along the way. Any hindrance in your speed or slowing down, and the cloud will swallow you whole. The fourth and final mode is Soul Survivor, where one of the four players in the game is chosen at random to be the ghost, and the goal is to turn the other members of the party into the undead before the given time runs out. All of these multiplayer game modes provide for a huge amount of replayability, and the creepy music, coupled with an even creepier atmosphere, smooth gameplay mechanics, and tons of replayability, 
make this psychological first person shooter my personal favorite of the series so far, one of which I'm, huge, I'm a huge fan of. So I give it a 9.5 out of 10 and would recommend it to anyone that owns an Xbox or PS3. As always, thanks for tuning in guys and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our friends over at GameMind so you can catch our newest releases and follow us on Twitter at Boom Explode to stay up to the minute on our latest news, reviews, and podcasts. Thanks again. It's ugly business killing a sibling, but you know all about that, don't you? Can you do it again?